Hey, this is Owen. If you're comfortable, leave your first name and state at the sound of the tiny truck backing up. What up? My name is Jesse. I'm from Massachusetts. Just was wondering what you thought about the uh, whole Dave Chappelle uh, controversy. I, I, I don't think it's deserved. I watched the video. It's called Daphne. It's about his transgender friend. He was very respectful about her the whole time, and I think he deserves much more respect than he's getting. But I wanted your opinion on it, because I honestly respect your opinion. Thank you. Have a good night. I appreciate that. That's awesome. Um, the clip about Dave Chappelle and Daphne, his, his bit explaining everything that happened with Daphne, I don't think that that specific clip about Daphne was offensive. I, I think it was like a 13-minute clip or something like that. I think it was fine, personally. However, there were other parts of that comedy routine that he did, like before the Daphne bit, that were absolutely terrible. And his apology, if you can call it that, to the trans community, was the result of him kind of sticking his foot in his mouth in previous comedy specials that he had done. I forget what the name of the last one was where he talked about all of this, but basically in the last one he was talking about being trans and he said, I can't relate to that. Imagine if I woke up and I was a different race. Like, what if I woke up and I was Chinese? And then he started doing some real racist shit, like real racist Asian stereotype stuff. It was bad. Dare I say, worse than the stuff he had to say about trans people his bit about Asians. It was pretty fucking bad. I'm okay with them being a little bit edgy. I'm totally cool with that. But there has to be a point to it. Sometimes jokes are all edge and no point. And at that point, like, what are you even doing? What's the goal here? In his case, the point that he was making with that specific joke when he got, you know, was saying what if he woke up and he was a different race, I guess the point was to try to get people to recognize that this is something that people experience that you don't really fully understand. But the way that he's going about it was, in large part, stereotypically transphobic. He's using a lot of the same perspectives and framing and viewpoints that really transphobic people use, like terribly transphobic people. Now, as far as I'm concerned, his bit about Daphne was okay, in my opinion. And that is the reason why I don't think that there should be as much outrage over this as there is, because the ending about Daphne was the inflection point. The ending was the part that everybody got upset about and that everyone's talking about right now. It's not that bad, the part that he was talking about Daphne on. It wasn't that bad. All of the other stuff leading up to that was pretty fucking bad, but that's the problem. The inflection point landed there, and since it was such a moderate thing, that very specific thing that he said, you've got the vast majority of people who hear about this story are saying, it wasn't that bad, you're blowing it out of proportion, you need to calm down, so on and so forth. I wish that there had been more outrage over some of the other things that he had said, not the Daphne stuff specifically, because he definitely went overboard. But when you think about it, that's what he does, right? That's his whole bit. He goes overboard with things intentionally. And he's a really funny guy sometimes. Like, really fucking funny. And other times, the jokes that he tells are... They may be funny to some degree to some people, but they're more hurtful than they are funny. So the way I see it is, I kind of try to take a death of the author approach with Dave Chappelle. Some of his stuff is really funny, and I can really appreciate it, uh, and I laugh my ass off at some of it, but some of the shit that he says is pretty fucking bad. So I appreciate the good stuff to some degree, just like a lot of people appreciate the good stuff that came from J.K. Rowling, the Harry Potter series, for example. And I condemn the bad stuff. J.K. Rowling is a, a terrible person in a lot of ways and has, a, and has had a lot of bad things to say. 
So it's a death of the author thing. You can appreciate Harry Potter, but recognize that J.K. Rowling is not a great person. I get the impression that if somebody just sat down with Dave Chappelle and explained some of this shit to him and explained to him, like, why this is a problem and how he could fix it and what he's doing is harmful and things like that, I get the impression he would accept that. I mean, I, I, who knows? You know, I don't know anybody who even knows the guy could sit down and talk to him. So we'll probably never know how he would react. But just his personality seems like the type that would be willing to listen. So anyways, that's my opinion on it. The Daphne stuff, it wasn't that bad. Everything leading up to it was pretty fucking bad. But that's who he is. Dave Chappelle is all edge. And sometimes he has a point and sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he comes at it from a terrible direction. Sometimes he comes at it from a good direction. It's kind of hit and miss with Dave Chappelle. I wish we had chosen a better inflection point than the Daphne stuff. I wish that we had gotten on him about his jokes about trans people sitting in a car with, the, with you know lesbians and gays and bisexuals. I wish that we had gotten on him about that joke instead of the Daphne stuff. If we'd gotten on him about that stuff, we might have been able to get somewhere, but you can't, you can't determine where the inflection point's going to be when you're dealing with things like this. Hey, Owen, this is Becca. I was diagnosed with CIDP a few months ago. Um, that's an autoimmune disorder that damages the outer covering of the nerves in your arms and legs. Uh, there's a few treatment options for it. Two involve receiving parts of people's blood as an IV, and the other options are medications that suppress your immune system, uh, basically so that your body can start healing quicker than it's falling apart. Um, I'm doing one of the first options. I get a round of IVIG every four weeks, and it's been helping me a lot. Um, by the time I started treatment, I was walking with a cane and had a really hard time climbing stairs, but now I can walk and even run without assistance. Um, I'd almost certainly be in a wheelchair by now without the treatments that I've been receiving, so I'm really glad that I didn't grow up JW. Um, I got the joys of growing up in a different cult instead. Um, now, the IVIG treatments that I get, get can actually be collected from horses or rabbits as well as human donors. Uh, so I was wondering what Jehovah's Witnesses would think about receiving animal blood antibodies as opposed to human antibodies. Thanks. Yeah, I appreciate the phone call. Really interesting question. I had to look out of curiosity um, what their website says about it, and it doesn't actually specify, I don't believe, but they do mention specifically that Jehovah's Witnesses are not allowed to, quote-unquote, eat animal blood. The whole doctrine started with them saying you're not allowed to eat animal blood. That's like what the Bible verse says, and that's why they banned people from taking blood transfusions from people. So it's an extension of the already existing verses. Their policy about not taking blood transfusions is a stretch. It's an extrapolation on the Bible policy of not eating blood, quote unquote. But again, this was like Old Testament shit that was kind of done away with when Jesus died. And aside from that, I've actually gone through the scriptures and looked at the interlinear version of the Bible, looked ex at, I'm sorry, looked at exact translations. The words that are used in the Bible do not lend themselves to the idea that you should just die rather than take treatments for an illness. The parts of the Bible that talk about this don't even imply that that's the case. And in fact, around that time, they did have blood-related treatments. I mean, they were ridiculous, like bloodletting and things like that. But the point is, Jehovah's Witnesses extrapolated grossly from a verse that talks about eating animal blood. And it's irrelevant to us today, but they stick with it anyway. So the answer to your question is, Jehovah's Witnesses would not be okay with you doing that, which makes me even happier that you're doing it. Just one more stick in the craw, if you will. Hey, Owen, this is James, again, a longtime listener, fan of your uh, podcast. I have a question. Um, you talk about video games. Do you like um, 
tabletop RPGs. Uh, I don't know what Jehovah's Witnesses think of them, but I would imagine they wouldn't like them. That's all I wanted to know. You have a wonderful week ahead and a great rest of the month. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, Growing up, we were actually banned as Jehovah's Witnesses from some very specific, very popular tabletop games. I don't know if you'd consider Dungeons & Dragons a tabletop game, but that was the main one that we weren't allowed to play, Dungeons & Dragons. Sadly, because I, I've come to understand that it's actually a really fun game, and it was created by a Jehovah's Witness, as it turns out. Yeah, we weren't allowed to play that, so I never really got into tabletop games very much. But I do like collecting old things. So if, it, if it's some kind of an old game, even if it's not like a console retro game cartridge or something, I would still collect it. I think that'd be pretty cool. Hey, Owen. Uh, this is Josh. I've been watching your show for a couple months now, and I really like it. Uh, I was just wondering what you thought about this thought. Do you think evangelicals uh, possibly think that Trump is the Antichrist since he's driving them further towards the Armageddon and destruction of the Earth they so desperately desire? Thanks. Interesting question. I don't think that they really put that much thought into it. I get the impression they're, they view him as like a messiah more than anything else. I don't think that they really view him as the Antichrist because they've already named the Antichrist. They have defined the Antichrist as Obama. Hi, I'm Chuck Norris, and this is my wife, Gina. We are here to talk about a growing concern we all share. If we look to history, our great country and freedom are under attack. We're at a tipping point and quite possibly our country as we know it may be lost forever if we don't change the course our country is headed. We know you love your family and your freedom as much as Gina and I do. And it is because of that we can no longer sit quietly or stand on the sidelines and watch our country go the way of socialism or something much worse. We will preserve for our children this last best hope for man on earth, or we will sentence them to take the first step into a thousand years of darkness. And then when Obama didn't bring a thousand years of darkness like they claimed he would, they claimed it was Hillary Clinton. Anytime there's something they don't like, they name it either the Antichrist or the Mark of the Beast. That's just kind of their M.O. at this point. I think they view him as like a messiah more than an antichrist. Hello, I'm Johannes from Zeppelin, Germany. And I just came to call and ask your opinion on the Pledge of Allegiance because you think it should be, uh, like, have the religious stuff removed or do you think it should be removed entirely or stay as it is? Because I have gotten so much shit for saying the, for for not saying the Pledge of Allegiance, even though I am a German, and I do not have allegiance to this country. Thank you and bye. I do think the Pledge of Allegiance is ass backwards. We absolutely shouldn't be having our kids say that in a classroom. Basically, no other country does that on planet Earth unless it's like an extreme dictatorship or something. It's fucking weird. And the under God part, wasn't even added to the Pledge of Allegiance until, like, the 1950s or something, around the same time they added In God We Trust to our currency. We didn't always have it on our dollars. The point is, we absolutely shouldn't be having our kids say shit like that. The Pledge of Allegiance, it's ass backwards. I absolutely do not stand for it. And you should not be harassed or shamed into saying it, just because people think that you should be like everybody else. I would recommend you don't say it. Hey, Owen, this is Raven in Washington State, formerly South Carolina. And I wanted to talk about uh, AA and NA with you real quick. Uh, As I mentioned uh, maybe before that I am previous Jehovah's Witness myself, and I had an alcohol problem, and I turned to AA, and then I ended up getting sober, three and a half years sober now, and uh, I don't go to AA much anymore. and I know how you feel about NA and AA, and I would agree with you in, in principle. Um, I definitely think they're high-control groups as well, especially depending on where you are located. If you're in a conservative area, they will tend to be more religious and controlling. But my question to you is that 
Um, is that completely a bad thing? I would love for everybody to be able to have an open mind and to free their mind, but quite frankly, most of the people that I've met in NA and AA need that structure and that heavy hand in order to keep themselves from falling into addiction again or from freaking dying. And most of those individuals are people that if they lost that heavy hand, uh, they likely would return to that. So I just wanted your thoughts on how far is too far with that whole thing. And when does it become toxic? Uh, thanks. Again, this is Raven in Washington. Big fan. Love all your stuff. Former JW, 40 years old, and I, I love everything that you do, bro. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, so ultimately, I think the question is, when is it okay to use control tactics on people. In the case of NA and AA people, like people who had addictions, they need that heavy-handed control. And to some degree, I, I agree with you on that point. There are some cases in which people, for their own good or their own safety, need to have their rights taken away. For example, if somebody is, you know, on watch or something they have to have their rights taken away by being observed 24 7 being put in a room and having things removed from that room that they could use to hurt themselves things like that in that case in in most situations that's voluntary but still they needed that for their own protection right there are cases in which people need their rights taken at least temporarily for their own safety and protection, and it sounds like that's what you're referring to here. My big problem with NA and AA is that they are they are not science based. If they were basing all of this on science, I would be down. But personally, I didn't go to NA or AA for long. I've been to a few meetings, but eventually I went to secular therapy, science based therapy, basically. And that did a lot for me. I understand the need for drug testing me and counting my pills, uh, you know, my medications and things like that. Those are freedoms or rights that they took away from me because I needed that heavy-handed technique at the time for my own protection. But everything that they did was based on science and we had real psychologists working there na and aa was started in a church and is run by pastors more often than not at this point a lot of groups are run by ex-addicts or ex-alcoholics pastor or not and that's a step in the right direction absolutely but in my opinion i think that there should be a psychologist at the front always and the steps shouldn't be based on whatever the hell they're based on, which is originally the Bible. They should be based on science. That's my big issue. If you're going to exert control over somebody's life in such a serious, dominating way, sometimes it's necessary. Make sure it's science-based. That was a really interesting question. When is it okay to use control tactics like cults use is it ever okay and the answer is yes as long as it's science-based and there's a professional involved people in na and aa most of the time their only expertise is having been there themselves that's not enough to exert control over somebody in my opinion or undue influence